Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Chilliwack honors the new Truth and Reconciliation Day. Mixed reactions to having yet another minority government in Ottawa. Do you have the winter tires on your vehicle? Those new rules go into effect on Friday. And hello Canucks, goodbye bandits. Our special guests this week include pollster Mario Canseco of Research Co. and Chilliwack Councillor Harv Westering on Councillor's Corner Chilliwack City. All right Chilliwack, let's get started. Today was the very first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, the day to remember and understand what happened, not just with residential schools and the tragedy there, but for all the injustice to First Nations people. There are many events on the SCED, including a Dreamcatcher workshop with Unique Get Together Society, and in just a few minutes after this newscast is over, there will be a ceremony and a vigil at Yarrow's Pioneer Park. New provincial public health restrictions came into effect on Tuesday for Abbotsford, Hope, Chilliwack, Agassiz, Mission and Harrison. This was announced by the public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, and the health minister, Adrian Dix. Private gatherings in homes are now limited to five people or one household or of one household. Outdoor gatherings of 10 people are allowed unless everyone's fully vaccinated. Then the rules change. Organized events are limited to 10 people inside, 50 outside, unless a Again, everyone has their two doses. This is very similar to the restrictions in place for the Interior Health Authority. Chilliwack, Hope, Abbotsford, Harrison and Agassiz are being targeted due to a combination of lower vaccination rates and high transmissions of the COVID-19 virus. Now it is hoped that these measures will inspire those who are not vaccinated to simply roll up the sleeves. Canadians who cast a ballot in the recent 44th federal election are not that enthusiastic about the new minority government as they were two years ago. This from Mario Canseco in a new poll from Research, uh, Research Co. In the online survey of national representation, the sample of Canadians who voted in this year's federal election, 42% say they would be happy with a minority government led by the Liberals. 49% uh, would be upset. Well, we'll have that interview and break down the numbers with Mario Canseco later on in the newscast. Last Friday, Chill TV was following a shots fired story from the downtown core. RCMP Corporal Mike Rail said that police closed off Wellington between Five Corners and the Service Canada building, which is across the street from the Royal Hotel. That's off Main Street. They were dealing with an incident. The public was never in danger. Shortly after 8.15 in the morning, there was a call of shots fired and Central Elementary, which is nearby, was in a hold and secure. The incident was also near a new, near a new daycare, which is now in the building that once housed Decades Coffee. One person was taken into custody as a person of interest, but so far RCMP are not commenting any further. Mere hours before that took place, there was a heavy police presence at the intersection of Yale Road and Hawking Avenue after one person was stabbed. This was in downtown Chilliwack. Two businesses kitty corner to each other, O'Connor, Chrysler and Shell, the gas station there, were taped off as RCMP officers investigated. Mounties were seen placing evidence markers throughout the car lot and photographing the scene. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The suspect remains on the loose. No motive has been released. Friday, October the 1st, is the start of the snow tire season. While you can get away with all-season radials and all-season tires in the Valley and Metro Vancouver, you gotta have those snow tires and, for trucks, the chains, all ready to go until April the 30th. The Ministry of Highway have all those details, and uh, the tire shops are rather busy right now keeping up with demand. The Chilliwack Métis Association has established the Nick Lang Memorial Bursary Award to honor Nick, a 15-year-old who died in 2015 while he was in government care. The bursary is available to UFE Indigenous students who are working towards a degree in child and youth care, criminal justice or social work, and who have a special interest in working with high-risk youth. Louis D. Yager, the immediate past president of the Chilliwack Métis Association and now Region 2 Director and Minister of Economic Development and Natural Resources for Métis BC, suggested establishing that bursary in Nick's name. Doing so fit in well with the association's commitments, which include teaching and learning Métis culture, fostering community relationships, and inspiring and mentoring the next generation of leaders. The idea to create the bursary for Nick resonated deeply with Peter Lang, Nick's 
dad and the current president of the Chilliwack Métis Association. Peter has sought a number of ways to honor his son over the years, including volunteering at the Fraser Valley Child Development Center and providing a bursary for one of his son's classmates in the year that Nick would have graduated with his own class. Another edition of Councillor's Corner Chilliwack City. This time, we have Chilliwack City Councillor Harv Westering. Chill TV's News of the Week and Councillor's Corner Chilliwack City with Councillor Harv Westering. Uh, Harv, there's a lot of ground we have to cover. First off, this is a, a special week. This is the first ever National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The City of Chilliwack uh, has a number of, of uh, programs and there are a number of events happening. Can you name just a couple of these? Uh, yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, the main one, I think, is the uh, uh, totem pole raising at the Kokolitsa or the uh, yeah Kokolitsa grounds Kokolitsa. there. And uh, also, if you've driven through the roundabout at the Vetter Bridge, you've seen that the uh, they've been lit up in orange. And this is just um, to honor the survivors of the residential schools, along with their communities and families. And that roundabout art was designed by Chief David Jimmy and also by the Indigenous uh, artist Bonnie uh, Graham. So uh, in order to support reconciliation, Council has prioritized relationship building with our local Indigenous um, nations. And we just want to work together to best determine how we can support their efforts. Uh, so City Hall will be closed on Thursday, uh, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, to observe um, this day. And we are encouraging everyone to educate themselves with regards to this important issue. Uh, another uh, topic, and I know your inbox gets full, I know the mayor's inbox will be full, and that's the 2022 financial plan. Uh, now, are we doing a public survey on this, uh, public input, uh, as we have done in past years? Yes, so um, we have a rolling plan, it's called the Comprehensive Municipal Plan, and it's a 10-year plan, and it identifies long-term needs and goals, and also short-term needs and goals. and. Every year we send out a survey and we ask uh, residents to engage with us and tell us, tell us what's important to them so that we can um, measure this and we can plan accordingly. So if you want more information on this, um, you can go to chilliwack.com forward slash budget and then let us know what's important to you so that we can have your input and plan accordingly. Single use item reduction bylaw that was passed last week. Has there been, what, what's been the reaction? Has it been fairly positive? Uh, I have heard through uh, social media with Chill TV and Fraser Valley News, a few businesses concerned about, quote, extra costs. But I'm curious to know, has there been pushback that you've had, uh, that you've heard of, or is it being pretty much accepted? Well, again, it's, it's uh, finding the right balance. So the surveys that we've had over the last few years indicate that the majority of residents want us to do something and to be leaders on the environmental front. So. The emphasis of this bylaw is to educate and not to uh, impose penalties or fines, that sort of thing. So the idea is um, we, had a, we had a bylaw, we sent it to the province, the province came back and said we had to make some modifications. So we've done that and this bylaw was then recently passed by council. And the idea of this is that we want to reduce um, plastic, basically plastic. So it's, um, the bylaw is focusing on the reduction of plastic takeout containers, plastic cups. No, not plastic cups, sorry. That was one of the rules that the uh, yeah. province said that we could not restrict. So plastic cups, unfortunately, and paper cups are still allowed, um, although we will educate on that too. But the single use reduction bylaw is aimed at plastic takeout containers, um, plastic straws, except those yeah. for accessibility needs, foam cups, and plastic disposable utensils. Uh, the Household Hazardous Waste Day, it's still a few weeks away, but it's something to uh, uh, really keep an eye on. Uh, I don't know how many times I have heard this. What do I do with the paint cans and the, the dead car batteries? Uh, and this is, where to, this is the day to do it? To take care of it? Yep, this is the day to do it. So last year we had uh, the Hazardous Waste Day as well, and it was at the Public Works Yard, which is just east of uh, Heritage Park. And it was so well attended that it was a bit of a zoo. So this year, to make it easier, we've decided to have the... Uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day at Heritage Park itself. So that should facilitate better, better flow. Mm. And this will be held from nine o'clock until three o'clock. So um, lots of time to get down there and get it done. And it's open to all um, residents really that, that uh, the landfill will accept garbage from. So that's the city of Chilliwack, 
um, Harrison Hot Springs, Agassiz Kent, and electoral areas D, E, and H. So basically called this lake, Chilliwack River Valley, and Popcom. And examples of items that we can, um, that we'll take are paint, motor oil, antifreeze, household batteries, um, fire extinguishers, propane tanks, that sort of thing. But it's important to note that only residential quantities will be accepted. So if you're a business uh, or commercial outfit, um, they we're not set up for that sort of thing. So you'll have to make other arrangements. And if you want more information on that, you can visit uh, chilliwack.com forward slash hazardous waste day for more details. And uh, last but not least, and we, we poke fun at uh, Councillor Jason Lum, who's not here, but we were talking about him off air because he is the pride of Yarrow, uh, the Yarrow Narrow, uh, Neighborhood Plan. And those workshops are coming up next week. Uh, a lot of attention was on Sardis and that neighborhood plan, but Yarrow has a unique uh, situation too. There's only so so much land that they can grow. Uh, so I'm, I'm assume, assuming this is going to be spirited, if not a heated discussion. <laughs> yeah, usually uh, when you're dealing with the outskirts, Yarrow, Rosedale, Greendale, that sort of thing, there's definitely uh, opinions on all sides. So um, we are having the neighborhood uh, the Yarrow Neighborhood Plan Workshop, and that will be held online on Monday, October 4th from 12 to 1, and Wednesday, October 6th from 6.30 to 7.30. And we can only take 40 people um, on each one of those. So if both of those fills up, we will have a diff a another one. So there'll be lots of opportunity for input. The, a survey has already been sent out and we've got over 300 responses. So we have a pretty good idea what, uh, you know, what the residents of Yarrow want. Uh, themes include residential development, commercial and industrial envelop development, mobility, environmental protection, recreation, Yarrow Central Road, lots of other things. Um, and if you want more information, you can go online to engagechilliwack.com forward slash Yarrow plan um, or contact their planning department. City Councillor Harv Westering and another edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City, thanks again for coming in. Thanks very much, Don. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. <clears throat> Chill TV's News of the Week in conversation with Mario Canseco, uh, who operates uh, Research Co., uh, which is a polling agency. Mario, you had an interesting uh, poll come out uh, over the past week. Fewer Canadians are happy with a Liberal minority than what we saw in 2019. Can you expound on that? What happened? We have pretty much have a carbon copy of two years ago, but we're not happy about it? That's right. Uh, the sense of dissatisfaction with the idea of the Liberals uh, leading a new minority government is certainly lower now than it was a couple of years ago. And I think part of this is related to just how many Canadians were new to the voting system, how many of them expected something different to happen. And the fact that we're essentially in the same situation that we had before, I think, you know, going back to 2019, people were worried about who was going to be forming the next government. And now that we have essentially the same situation that we did a couple of months ago, uh, they're looking at it with a higher sense of dismay than they did two years ago. Uh, was there any uh, major blip when it came to the numbers, uh, say, Fraser Valley, Metro Vancouver, BC, as opposed to the rest of Canada, or was this fairly consistent? Well, it was fairly consistent. I think we see a couple of areas where there's more dissatisfaction with this. Definitely, you look at Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, uh, the areas that voted very heavily for the Conservatives, but also some parts of BC. You know, it really strikes me as, as something crucial here that a little bit of that is coming from the Fraser Valley and Southern British Columbia but also from Vancouver Island. I think there was an expectation from those who did not want to see any new Democrats elected or Greens uh, that they had a shot at winning some seats. And they did better than in the last election, but certainly not enough to allow them to be in the House of Commons. You brought up a good point uh, when it came to the NDP in the Fraser Valley uh, last year with the provincial election, uh, in, at least in Chilliwack, the NDP took both of those uh, ridings. Uh, on our election coverage on Chill TV, John Less said the the bump with the NDP provincially, the bump with the NDP here, even though Mark Strahl still won, he called that an anomaly. Do you look at it the same way or are you, are you seeing a trend? Uh, is it going to move away from the Conservatives in the Fraser Valley towards NDP because of that shift in population? Well, I think what we saw in the October 2020 provincial election was more a sense of satisfaction with how the pandemic was managed. Uh, I don't think it had a lot to do necessarily with changing migration patterns or younger families moving in, people not going to church anymore. 
I think it was more related to the way things were going when it came to COVID-19. You know, this government has done a good job. Maybe we should send somebody to represent us who is uh, a member of that specific a, a political party. Uh, I think there was an expectation from the liberals that they were going to do better in the Fraser Valley by knocking on doors and reminding people that everybody who wanted to, to be vaccinated was vaccinated and that, and that they have been good stewards of uh, Canada when it comes to COVID-19. It didn't actually happen that way. You know, they didn't win a lot of seats, certainly not the same ones that they won back in 2015. So I think it's a combination of both, but certainly not something that suggests that the numbers are going to trend for the NDP in the next federal election, if and when it happens. It might be in the next 18 months. Uh, when you were doing the poll, uh, did it come up of, of, of people mentioning, and we've heard this number a lot of times now, uh, $600 million for this election. Were people grumbling about that or just going, okay, we're not thrilled of what we got, but we've got another liberal minority. Did, did you hear any of that when it came to the actual expenditure for this election? Well, there is clearly a sense of dissatisfaction with this, uh, partly because of the fact that we continue talking about this for the first three weeks. I think this is also crucial. When we look at the election of BC, uh, it was a 48 hour story. The fact that this election was happening, people were very quick to forgive the Horgan government for deciding to do this. Uh, Justin Trudeau didn't have that same luxury. You know, we continue to talk about why we were having this election three weeks later. And I think this is definitely part of the problem with the analysis afterwards. You know, there was a big expenditure and it was definitely complicated because of the intricacies of the pandemic uh, to wind up in the same situation that we have right now. But, you know, in, in a way, I think this was a very successful campaign from the conservatives to keep that issue going. The BC Liberals tried to do that a year and a half ago and it didn't actually work that way. Was, th was there any other uh, stat that came up that, that really jumped out at you or was it pretty much okay we're, we've got what we've got with and we may or may not have another election in two years well one of the things that is interesting when we look at the numbers is the fact that there's not a lot of support for cooperation between the liberals and the ndp two years ago we had almost 60 percent of canadians who said i'd be okay with some sort of former uh, deal between these two parties to try to do something. And this time around, it's not like that. So we continue to see the same trend for the federal NDP. People who like Jagmeet Singh, he has a high rating, uh, but they just don't want to vote for the NDP or see the NDP involved in the government on a formal basis. So we're back at where we were before, certainly not the same level of support for the NDP to suggest that a formal coalition would be in place. Uh, but I was definitely struck by the sense of, uh, that many Canadians are essentially saying um, we're not happy with the parliament we have, uh, but we would be even uh, less so if the NDP gets involved. Mario Canseco of Research Co. We will have more of these conversations as uh, the weeks go on. Big thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Don, anytime. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Just like the cat came back, the NHL came back to the Abbotsford Center. The Vancouver Canucks playing an exhibition game against Calgary on Monday night, winning 4-2. It was the first time that team played in their farm team's barn. Abbotsford now the AHL affiliate for Vancouver. They were once the AHL affiliate for Calgary. Local country star Cambry Lovesy did the honors in singing O Canada. The controversy was the lack of television coverage. The game was live streamed on the Calgary Flames TV website with no audio. There were no local providers that picked up the broadcast. While the NHL came back to Abbotsford, the Fraser Valley Bandits waved goodbye and moved to the Langley Event Center. But it's not clear if the Canucks farm team had anything to do with this move west, or if it was from AIG, the Aquilini Investment Group, the owner of the Abbotsford Canucks and the Vancouver Canucks. AIG took control of uh, the Abbotsford Center, and officially that will happen January the 1st, but it's not clear if this was a precursor to the move above the Fraser Valley Bandits. Chill TV weather, the rain giving way to a crisp fall day or two, sunshine in the high of 20, well, with the chance of those fall showers. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. And in honor of Truth and Reconciliation Day, that says it all. I'm Don Lane.